if you landed here, you then you're a really curious uh, individual because you are interested in trying to figure out why there is a one third in the formula of the volume of a frustum. And that could be of a pyramid or of a cone. At least that's what this video is going to cover. I've been asked quite a lot of questions on this one third. So it started with the pyramid and I did a general proof. I'll put up a link up above there. You do need to trust that you understand that the pyramid does have a one third in the volume and it's one third basically of the prism. I have been asked about one third in the cone and I've done that as well. So I'll put up a link up above there. And again, it is one third of the cylinder that a cone is. And now, okay, I've been asked about a frustum. And I wanted to do this video, I'll do it as uh, short as I can. So it does take quite a lot of time to try to put these things together. So I do hope that you can, you know, give it a thumbs up, um, maybe subscribe and then support the 1 million journey, okay, if you can. So let's get to it. So a frustum is basically a portion. It's the bottom portion. So in this case, you see this bottom portion right here. Okay, so this is the frustum. And it is like having a pyramid and that particular pyramid that you would have uh, would be cut, okay, into pieces. So I'm going to actually duplicate this and I just want to show you. So here it is. So I basically cut off that top piece. And as you remove that top piece, right, you basically have the frustum at the bottom. So now the question is, why is there a one third in the volume formula? So I'm not interested in deriving the entire volume formula for you, but you can uh, certainly deduce, okay, from what I'm going to do here. So first of all, my assumption is that you do uh, know that if you take any pyramid, so now I have actually two pyramids here, all right? So let me kind of uh, call this pyramid. So this one is gonna have a base I'm going to call this base um, one. Okay, so that's going to be the bottom big pyramid. And this one is going to have a height. Okay, so here's the height of the pyramid right there. So that's what I have. Okay, in there. So that height, let's call this height capital H. I'm going to call that height capital H right there. And if you wanted to be able to know what that volume is, it would just simply be, so volume, all right, of the, I'll put B for big, all right, and maybe that's, that's what I'll do there. Okay, so volume of the big pyramid, it is equal to one third of the base, so this is gonna be base B1, and this is gonna be multiplied by the height. So again, if you're curious on why that is the case, you can look at the link that I provided. I'm going to make that assumption. Now, the other um, case is, and I can actually just drop this. Let me just remove this one from there. I'll just keep it as B for base. And then for the other pyramid, so this one, I'm going to use a different color maybe. So I'm going to assume, okay, so that the other pyramid, so that's right there. So it's going to have a height, let's call this height little h. All right, so that's the same height, okay, that you see right there. So that's just the height of this pyramid. And then it's going to have a base, right? So this is all, this also has a base. I'm going to call this base B. So this would have been base B right there. And so as you can see here, so this is also a pyramid. So this is going to be the volume, okay, of the um, base B. So this is the small b. And it is equal to one third of the base multiplied by the height. And now it should be relatively clear because if you want the volume of the frustum, so if you're going to take this thing off, right? So if I remove this thing, okay, and I just chuck it out of the way, all right? Now, I can certainly find out what the actual volume is, okay, of that frustum. So the volume itself is going to be, so this is the volume of the 
big pyramid minus, because I'm just removing, the small pyramid. So this is going to be that. And then if you just substitute, so this is going to be one third of the big B, right? So this is your capital H minus one third of the small B and a small H. So this is what you will have right there. And you can clearly take out that one third. So you can factor that out. And what you're going to have is you're going to have big base right there times H minus the base of the small one and H right there. So this is the volume of the frustum, right? So this is what you would have in here. Now you can uh, certainly massage this, you know, further. So for example, you know that this big H, you know, so if you have that H, well, that is just equal to the height, okay, of the frustum. So for example, you know, if I actually did this, right there. So if this was the height of the frost, I'm going to be running out of H's here. So I got to make a, a funny H okay, in here. So let's make it, you know, something like this. <laughs> okay, so that's going to be the H of that. So you can certainly take that H, right? So this um, capital thing is just going to be, you know, so it's going to be your funny okay, H plus your little H and you can substitute that in here. And then you can play around because you're going to have two of those H's. Now, how you do this, right, it doesn't really matter. But the key question is, you know, is there a third or not? And of course, there's going to be a third because it's just made up of two pyramids, the big pyramid, and then you can subtract the small pyramid, and then you can find your actual volume. Now, the other question might be, you know, are you restricted to the base? So notice, you know, I have a rectangular base in there or even a square base. It doesn't matter. So the base that you use here, so this particular base here um, is irrelevant to us. So it does not matter what this is. It could be, you know, a square base, you know, a rectangular base. You know, it could be all kinds of fancy okay, bases that you have. It could even be, okay, um, a circle, right, right there, okay, or an ellipse. It's going to work for all of this. So this kind of relates back to the fact of, you know, within here, I point out that, you know, like what if it's a cone, right? So cone means that I would have to have a base, which is some kind of a, a circle in there. So it does not matter, you would approach it in exactly the same way. And both the cone has one third in its formula of the volume and so does the pyramid. And the pyramid, the base can be any um, base that you actually want to be able to take so long as you can calculate that base. And I did that in the proof, I generalized it in total. So there you have it. You know, if you wanted to know why there's a third, I hope that this explanation helps. Hopefully you'll find this useful. You know, give it a thumbs up. It does help. Okay. And you know, maybe you'll subscribe. So welcome to the 1 million journey. Bye everybody.